what's up y'all listen i had a plan okay i had a plan i want to start this by saying i had a plan my plan was to go for my walk this morning and record the trail right like do the spiritual snack while i'm out on the trail uh but my allergies were being very disrespectful and it wasn't cute so um we're doing it now that i'm back home so as i was walking on my trail this morning i saw a bunch of well the sign said they were waterfowl but i just thought they were dutch you know they look like ducks to me um but i saw one of them um teaching the little ones it was super cute i was gonna record it but i didn't want to like i felt like that would look weird i don't know but anyway so uh they were like trying to teach the young one um how to fish or how to go down and under like i saw the big one go down and under then the little one went down and under big one went down and other another little one uh went down and under and it was so cute because this is exactly what we're talking about today about trailblazing about showing other people the right way showing other people um how to do what it is that god is calling us to do uh, and so i thought that was so fitting and so for today we're going to be talking about Caleb just a little bit more and um, we're going to be unpacking the way that he was a trailblazer so come with me as we head to Numbers chapter 13. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. But then Caleb silenced the people before Moses. We should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. So Caleb and the other 11 leaders of the tribes of Israel went into this land to confirm that the promise of God was real. They went into this land to confirm that what God said was available to them in this land uh, that they hadn't yet occupied. Um, they want to confirm that it's actually there. God said it was a land flowing with milk and honey. And so they went to see if that were true. And that's exactly what they found y'all. They went and they found that what God said was true. But they also found out that in addition to this land that's flowing with milk and honey, this land that had an abundance of fruit, it also had uh, some people that they would have to remove. Uh, it also had some giant that they would have to overcome and so because they saw that this required a little bit more than what they thought uh, would be required of them they came back with a bad report because they saw all of these enemies of the tribes of Judah all of these enemies that were inhabiting this land that was promised to them because they saw that the enemies were present uh, they felt that it wasn't possible to fully take control of to take ownership of the land that God promised them and this is important for us to remember because at the end of the day we are entitled to some things as children of God. There are some blessings with our names on it. Uh, there are some uh, promotion, some power, some authority. There's some things with our name on it, uh, but in order for us to take ownership of it, in order for us to actually step into those spaces and places, every now and again, we're gonna have to fight some giants. We're gonna have to face some giants. And I think when it comes to becoming trailblazers, we have to understand that if we wanna get to the place where we can where we can shatter glass ceilings, where we can tear down walls, where we can um, break generational curses. If we wanna to get to those places, we have to understand that it will be hard work. There's nothing in the word of God that says that it's going to be easy. There's nothing in the word of God that says that it will come uh, swiftly or, or that it will come without obstacle or without trial or tribulation. In fact, just the opposite. The Bible tells us that we will have tribulations of all kinds, but that the Lord delivers us from them all. But when we see those things rear their ugly heads, it can be easy for us to convince ourselves to focus on the bad instead of recognizing that the promise of God still remains true. Caleb recognized that the promise of God was still true, even though he saw the same giants, right? He saw the same obstacles. He saw the same things that everyone else saw, but he came back and he said, listen, we can still do this. We still have the ability to take ownership of the land that God promised us. And yes, there was fruit, y'all. Yes, there was milk and honey. Y'all, yes, there was abundance. And this is the land that God promised us. We can do this. That's what Caleb says. In spite of the fact that the rest of the crew was only uh, purporting a bad report, was only going back uh, to the rest of the Israelites and saying, listen, there's no way that we can defeat all of these. Caleb spoke up 
And in doing so, he provided a, a sound, a voice of encouragement among the loudness uh, of naysayers. He was able to speak up and acknowledge the fact that God would equip them and enable them to do exactly what God said they would be able to do. And so whatever it is that you have to face, whatever it is uh, that you believe God is calling you uh, to do next, whether it is to blaze a new trail or whether it is to help someone get through a trail that has already uh, been laid out for you, whatever it is, understand that there will be some giants, there will be some obstacles, but God's promise will remain the same. And if you are mindful of that, you will be able to do just what Caleb did and remind yourself that certainly you can do do it. You can get through everything that the enemy will try to throw at you because God has already said that you have won. God has already said that you will inhabit this land of milk and honey. So keep that in mind. No matter what the path is before you, understand that you can do it. That's all that I have for you guys today. Before we go, I want to encourage you to please, please, please sign up for our trip to the Museum of the Bible. I'm super excited. It's going to be lots of fun. And yes, there will be food. So make sure you sign up today. Space is limited and we head out on May 20th. And also, on the third Sunday of this month, one, two, three, third Sunday, May 21st, make sure you bring your entire crew, your team, whether it's sports related, whether it's like, you know, your debate team or your chess team, um, or if you're like the Black Student Union, whatever it is, or even if it's just your homies, right? Whoever it is, bring them on to Kingdom Fellowship. Whoever brings the most friends will win something special. Can't wait to see y'all then. Bye-bye.